Friday morning, Mount Olive family, friends of Mount Olive, all of you who are tuned in to watch another Friday devotion. Uh, pray you've got a chance to watch all the ones we've had so far this week. Each one of them has been really good, as always. And I pray that you would, uh, if you've not got a chance to, go back and uh, start with Sunday's uh, message from Pastor TJ and, and look at each of the devotions. You know, they're all related to his message on Sunday. Uh, some, some, but some very good devotions this week. Uh, before we get, uh, I share my screen with you. I just want to ask each of you to say a special prayer for, for me. Uh, I have a special unspoken request. The Lord knows all about. And I just want Him to work in that situation. So, if you would, uh, please say a prayer, uh, a special prayer for, for me. I, I, I would appreciate that. So, let me share my screen now. If I can get this going. So I found this graphic that uh, says that um, be the light. Uh, you know, if you were if you uh, were there Sunday, Pastor TJ, he said that uh, you know we've been we are uh, we are the building, we are a family. And so this week we are the light. Uh, and his message came from Matthew chapter five. Let's go through those verses. Matthew chapter five, verses fourteen through sixteen. Uh, and he's and first 14 says, you are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, uh, which is in heaven. Uh, who was Jesus speaking to when he said these words? Was it the rabbis of the synagogues? Was it the Pharisees? Was it the scribes or the religious elite? No, it was the ordinary folk. It was the shepherd. It was the farmer. It was the merchant. It was the father and the mother. And it was people just like you and me. You know, Jesus was speaking this truth to the ordinary people because the Pharisee, the rabbis and the Pharisees, the religious elite had lost their vision and their lights had went out. You know, God had selected the nation of Israel as his people, and they were to worship him and do what he asked them to do. But they forgot and they failed. You know, Israel was to be the light to the lost world. Uh, let's look at uh, some of these verses here that, that tells us that. And they're in Isaiah. Isaiah 42, 6 says, I, the Lord, have called thee, now speaking about the nation of Israel, in righteousness, and will hold thine hand. And will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles. So God is telling Isaiah here that, you know, the nation of Israel was supposed to be a light for all the Gentiles. And then uh, Isaiah 49, 6, he said, and he said, is it a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tri tribes of, J of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be uh, my salvation unto the end of the earth. Now, that was, that was what God wanted for the nation, uh, for them to, for the nation of Israel, for them to be a light uh, to, to, you know, to all of us, not just to, to them only, but they became self-centered. And, uh, you know, and it actually, they were supposed to be leading the this lost world, these Gentiles, they were supposed to be leading them to salvation, but they didn't, you know, because it came to the Jews first. And even, even Paul says that in Romans 1, 6, he says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But then John uh, in chapter one, verse 11, uh, he talks about it. He said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to the Jewish people. Uh, he came to the Jewish elite. He came to the Jewish Pharisee, and uh, they did not receive him. They didn't want it. You know, we've, we've got to remember, Gentiles at the time of Christ were considered as dogs, and they were, uh, you know, were not worthy of any consideration. We were outcasts to the people of Israel. We were considered unclean. It was even said that the Pharisees, would hold uh, their garments, uh, you know, so as close as they could to their bodies as they walked down the streets in fear of part of their clothing might 
touch or brush up against the Gentile and they would be clean. They lost sight of what God wanted them to do. And he wanted them to be alive. So Jesus took the message of, of love and forgiveness, of grace and mercy to the people on the hillside so that they uh, may understand the truth that they were to be the light to a lost generation. And Jesus is telling us the same thing. The same commission he gave to Israel, he's given to us. We who are Christians, we need to be Christ-like, we need to be light, and also, uh, also to the lost that in our circle that, that we're in. John uh, 8, 12 says, Then Jesus spake uh, unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the, the light of life. Jesus tells us that he is the light of the world. He was sent to bring light to a dark world, a world that was overtaken by hurt and sin. But then in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Here is that theological quandary that Pastor TJ talked about in his message uh, on Sunday. In John, he just said, you just said, he is the light of the world. But here Jesus is saying that we are the light of the world. But Jesus, he answers the, this question in the, in the second half of that previous verse that we looked at. And John, he said, he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And, and, what, are we, and what are we to do with this light? The same things he told those people on the hillside over 2,000 years ago. Matthew 16, five, chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So let your light shine here, there, everywhere. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And be the light. I hope you've enjoyed this Friday devotion. I hope that uh, something uh, was said or done that uh, I'd encourage you to be the light, uh, because we are the light, that we will speak to our lost friends and neighbors, our, our loved ones, those that we work with who may be lost, that you know God would just um, be a, a very uh, present help for us as we try to be the light in the world we live in. I, I was saw a church sign uh, in uh, somewhere and on the back, on the side facing out, you might have like the announcement, but the side facing toward the church, when you come out to all the Christians, says you are now entering the mission field. You know, and that's why we need to think about it. You know, we're when we leave, when we go out into the world, we are entering the mission field, no matter where it is. We don't have to go all the way to Nicaragua or Puerto Rico or wherever. You know, we can be a, a, a missionary in in the place that, that we live, the place we work, the places that we go. So I hope you've enjoyed this devotion. Uh, as a, uh, just you know, please uh, just say a special prayer for uh, for me that you know God's will would be done. Uh, and I uh, hope to see you Sunday. Uh, Pastor TJ gave us a, a little hint on Wednesday night to, that we are salt. So be 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 much in prayer for him. And be much in prayer for all those that come. We uh, uh, thankful for the young lady who who gave her heart and life to Jesus on Sunday morning. Uh, you know, there's many more there. There's many more there that, that need the Lord. So pray that, you know, God will speak to hearts uh, this Sunday morning. Thank you all very much. See you Sunday.